Here we go. Uh, this is Eric Anderson from uh, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And um, on my right, I have Scott Graham from uh, Team Kaboom. And on my left, I have Aaron Allringer from The Ringers. Welcome, guys. Hi. Thanks. And uh, we are here uh, live from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And today, um, have a really awesome uh, interview. We are interviewing Terry Ekeluf from uh, Team Ekebi. And Terry is originally from Goatland and uh, he's living now in Stockholm. So welcome, Terry. Thank you so much for uh, agreeing to do this interview. Thank you for having me. Oh, no I problem. It will, it will be funny. Yes, it's gonna be a great, uh, it's gonna be a great time. We're really excited about it. And right now it's five o'clock in Stockholm, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Oh, awesome, awesome. Um, I just, and actually I had the opportunity to meet you last year when I played in the World Championship. And um, before that, we had been in contact a couple times. I think you had sent me a video uh, of your brother, um, and we kind of corresponded back and forth. And you did the interview for Kube Nation magazine back in 2011 as well. So yeah. um, that was awesome, wasn't it, guys? It was, yeah. I, yeah. I learned a lot from your interview um, in Kube Nation, and I and and I and just you um, communicating with us over the big ocean, uh, I think, helps bring uh, a more skill. To the United States, but also um, kind of fulfills our mission of Kube, which is bringing people together and creating peace on Earth. So it just it feels good to be talking with you. Well, thank you. But it, it would be fun to go over there and play with you someday. someday. The invitation uh, <laughs> will will be in the mail. <laughs> thank you. We have uh, we you just just send them the plane tickets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That would be awesome to get, uh, and we can talk about that later about the how do we get a Swedish team to come over here and play? That would be a that would be a blast. Um, yeah. uh, I guess I the love it. yeah the the first question I like to ask you is um, uh, this year at the World Championship um, we haven't seen any videos or anything from it yet over here, but uh, um, from reading your website, you guys have a, a website team at uh, is it dot se? That's the website. Yeah. Yep. Um, I read it's on, in Swedish, though. It's in Swedish, yeah. And uh, we'd like to see more English. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm considerate, yeah. but okay. I, I just don't have the energy to, to oh, write. Oh, I understand. I like two okay. languages. languages. Okay. You, yeah. you just have to use Google Translate. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do that. <laughs> we'll uh, provide that for people. Um, but it sounds like you guys had a, a, tough, a tough world championship this year. I mean, even in your group... Uh, if I read it right, you had a two or two and a half hour uh, match, and then you had to play a top team from Germany, and then a top team a rematch from last year from Switzerland. Um, is it okay if you talk a little bit about your experience this year over at the World Championships for Team Ekebi? Yeah, the, the group was it was a thrill. Uh, two of the teams though were were quite easy, and we took them not playing at our top, but then we met this Basel six packs, I think their name was, mm -hmm. from Germany, and they were, I, I, I don't think they've been in the in the World Championships before, uh, I have never seen them anyhow, but they played really, really good, and uh, we lost one set against them, but managed to, to take them after two and a half hours, and then we had, the, was it six quarterfinals or 16 final yeah, yeah. Uh, a little bit easier game but we play really really bad so we lost the set even in that game uh, and then we ran into the Fortress 99 who I think they have placed themselves quite good a few years I think they have even a few medals from the world championships uh, and they've been playing a long time and always performs performs good and are very very professional i would say doing kub very very distinct i would say yeah uh, but at that time we're starting to play a little bit better and we managed to to knock them out and then we went into the final arena and arena yeah uh, SMP Basel was the opponents, and by then, from from the semi-finals and the finals, we played, I would say, flawless. 
<laughs> so, uh, and when we play flawless, we're quite hard to beat. <laughs> and the, so, the, oh. so the semifinals and the finals were actually the almost the easiest games of the day. Okay. And uh, and against the team from Basel, that's um, you played them last year in the semifinals, and I remember I think they beat you in the first in the first set. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and they they are really really good. Mm -hmm. But we were we were extremely playing extremely well that game. Mm -hmm. And uh, that in the match, um, I think I saw a picture too, maybe of the match in your group play against um, uh, the team, and it was such a long game that I mean your your game got surrounded by just tons of people, didn't it? Yeah, we were the only the only two teams playing because all all other groups have, have finished their games. So it was like five hundred people standing around watching just our game. <laughs> that's that's a big time coup, right? I mean that's yeah. that's uh how did that game go? I mean, they were did you guys win the first one or did they win the first game in that one? Do you remember or? Yeah, we won the first and then they took the second, and both two first sets were quite long. I think those two together took like two hours and 15 minutes. And then probably they were beginning to think that they actually could beat us, and the third set was closed quite fast. Yeah. They had to stomp them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just wear them out. <laughs> So with those with those first two games, the first two set the first two sets, um, do you guys just have like eight, nine, ten cubes going back and forth each time, or what was the what was that like? Well, we we we, tr we always try to keep the 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 short cubs to always be around six or seven because that's how many you probably are able to knock down with certainty every time yeah so so if it gets more than seven like eight or nine or ten we we throw them back so you have just six or seven short to play on and by throw them back you just mean you throw them long into the back line or yeah as long as you can and so you just pick two or three cubes to throw in the back yeah if if all ten is in in play you, you maybe throw seven short and three long do you do you have a different um, a different incastare that that would do that or would the same one do that? Uh, well, uh, at our team, uh, Yuke or Joachim is doing the long throws. He's a little bit better on that. Yeah. And he he actually <laughs> he's been practicing this summer to knock doubles at the base, like throwing throwing back cubs in front of the baseline and hit doubles. Do you do you see other? Do you, wow! Holy wow! We're like all. I don't know if you can see us right now, but we just like fell off our chairs. Uh -oh. This is nuts. I gotta change my whole. I got like so many questions for you right now. I'm just gonna throw up two, and then I'm gonna let these guys just roll with a couple of things. But he, he had plans for posting a video of throwing five on five base co cubes and knocking five doubles on the king, but we he did, only made four. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. Do 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 other teams do that as well, um, or is it just something that because not every team can throw deep and put them close together though, right? I mean, some people are going to throw them deep, but not be able to put them close together, right? Yeah, but but the thing is, well, of course it's it's better to put to to place them close even in the back, but at that time, it, the most important is to just get them as far back as possible, preventing the, the opponents to move forward. That's the, the key, because uh, if, if, you are, if you're facing a very, very good team and you let them move forward, it's over, always. And that you, you need to not make that happen. What, um, for, for that, do you, would you do that if you were playing on a two-person team, though? Yeah, of course. You would? Okay. It's not just because each person has one baton and it's a little bit more difficult. Well, yeah. 
Well, the numbers, how many you can manage short, depends on how good a team you are. So if if I'm playing with someone a little bit not as good in Kube, I would probably go for maybe five short only. Really? Yeah, of course. You are transforming American Kube <laughs> right now, man. We're going to have boys. I've, I've never, I've actually, I don't think I've ever seen in a high-level game someone throw long. Any coups. They're always grouping everything. And maybe it's that uh, greedy American mindset where it's just like all at once got to, I don't know. I, um, I'm much more intrigued by, by the strategy that you're revealing here. Um, and, it, and, it, and it brings out the requirement for another skill, throwing coups long. I mean, that's a, that's a totally different um, throw than the short coups. That's, that's kind of getting easy for a lot of people, I think, seeing what we're doing. So um, I'm really curious to hear about that. Because when, when we see maybe eight or nine coups short in the field, um, now that I think of it, you're right. Sometimes teams use up all six batons just getting those uh, coops down and the risk of leaving one in the field is there and what I'm hearing from you is never never leave yourself the opportunity to leave one in the field exactly it, it's better to knock down seven short with six batons than knock down nine and leave one short who, who came up with this strategy did you just stumble upon it as a team or did, was it one person that said hey maybe we should throw couple of them long to prevent the, sh the well yeah. we've, we've been thinking a lot about how to avoid losing in cup <laughs> in coop and, and i think this is a good strategy but on the other hand if, if you're facing a really 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 good team then you might push it a little bit go for eight but i would say 10 we would never throw 10 short okay that that team you were playing against in your group, the team from, uh, I forgot if you said they're from Germany or Switzerland, but um, were they doing the same thing or were they throwing them all short? No, all, all teams throw, throw them short always, I think. But not Team Ekebi now? <laughs> no, we, we've been doing this for several years. I'm quite amazed that no one copied it. I'm gonna copy it. <laughs> Cat's out of the bag now. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I wish I'd have known this yesterday in Appleton. I think maybe we could have beat this young team because we left a couple short. Never. Yeah. That's what I heard, and and what I heard from your strategy that I haven't really heard before is how to not lose because yeah. here we're all focused on winning, winning, winning. But but really, what I hear you saying is, um, it maybe the only times that you've lost are because you've given the game away. And that's, that's the way I feel usually is, I, I've never really, um, not won, it's that I've really lost it. Yeah. By giving them an advantage line or missing the king are usually my, those are my two. So focus on it, avoid losing instead. Right. Yeah. Yep, and it's more of a defensive sense. position to throw those cubes long, mm -hmm. so. I'm curious to see how we how we apply this new knowledge. And if you stick to that, then it's just a, a matter of patience. You just have to wait for the other team to make a mistake and then just smash them when yep. you get the opportunity. When and how are you guys on your on your eight meter? Um, it sounds like you must be missing some then. I mean, when you're on that on the team and in the pressure at the tournament, you know, I see videos posted of you guys, you know, playing perfect games and things, but that must not be the reality on the on the court. No, it's it's another game when when you play in front of an audience and you know uh, the pressure is on and I would say every everybody is like between twenty five and forty percent worse in a, in the world championships than they are like playing on their background backyard. Sure. Interesting. And that, that uh, I mean, we are too. We are, all, we are worse as well. That's good to hear. Yeah, it's good to hear. <laughs> Thank you.
You're giving me some not extra knowledge and extra uh, feeling that I'm not as bad as I think I am, right? No. Well, I've never been able to throw a perfect game right. on video or not, so <laughs> let alone six yeah. of them. Yeah, and we'll and we'll and, talk and, about your brother a little bit later, I think. But uh... sure. And and, and on, when you play tournaments, you just need to accept that you're not playing as well as. It's no point in getting angry because you think you're playing bad. Every, everyone is playing bad when comes to, to tournaments, I think. So what, as, as Team Ekabi, you have a strategy as far as, it sounds like you're saying if you're, if you're not playing well, you're playing bad in, in, you know, in the world championships, do you, do you try to just, you know, like you said, be patient? Um, do you just try to, you know, try to stay as consistent as you can and not make the big mistake? Rather than, you know, trying to trying to force yourself to a higher level and try to make some amazing shot, and you'll probably miss it. You know, instead of trying to go over the top, just stay, you know, kind of at a consistent level, maybe a little bit lower, and just not make any mistakes that would allow you to lose. Yeah, and, and those you. I, I, you, I mean, you can make the spectacular shots anytime, but I mean, most often it's not worth trying. Uh, first try, like, do it the easy way. And if you're forced, then of course you need to do, like, these trick shots. But if you can avoid even that, just don't try go for them. You're, you'll miss more than, but you'll, you'll lose more than it. And then you gain in the long right. run. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Like, like, like going for crazy doubles or triples or something. What I'm hearing is yeah. you you are all about risk management. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all mathematics, isn't yeah. it? Hmm. Fascinating. What, um, in the final, you played uh, a team called Beres Sorkar. I think maybe I'm saying that right or close to right. Um, yeah. And my understanding of them is they're a pretty young team. Do yeah, you, they're around 20. 20? Are there more um, younger teams kind of coming up through the ranks on Gotland now? Yeah, there is one team called Menasha Troa, I yeah. think, uh, with a guy called Joseph Björklund. Yeah. Uh, I would say he, he is individually one of the best players in the world i would say he's he's up there with my brother and you know tom thomason in barra Sorka. yeah i would say th those three guys are in a, in, a, in their own league uh, but uh, th this menage a trois they didn't really they haven't made it in the, in the world championships yet so i don't know if he has not been able to find the right team members or what but they're very determined so I think they will they will show up in a few years or even next year they yeah, and these in these young uh, young kids if you will or younger generation they yeah they look at this <laughs> they, as a sport they're they are even even younger I think they are like 17 or 18 or something mm -hmm. and, and then for them Koob is a uh, Kub is a sport for them, right? Yeah, they're taking it serious, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> We're starting to see that here, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. glad to hear. <laughs> yeah. But for, um, I guess that goes to a kind of a question that I had um, in regards to my, like, I get intrigued by what Kub is like on Gotland. And uh, is it, is it, do people th there think of it as a sport? Do they think of it just as part of their culture? Do they like how is Kub viewed on on the island of Gotland? Well, I, w I would say it's just like a go garden entertainment game. Uh, I would say no one sees it as a sport, and we actually haven't played it for so long. I think I played it the first time like in '95 or something. Uh, before that, no one knew what Kub was. Mm -hmm. But. But now some of these younger kids are viewing it more as a sport. Well, they're they're taking it more serious. Oh yeah. 
anyhow, but I, well, I don't know if they consider it being a sport or not. I don't. Yeah. What do you, what do you view it as? I don't know. <laughs> I, I think it's a fun game, like just uh, to a fun a fun game to play. But you practice kind of, like you practice kind of hard. I mean, you're 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 winning world championships. If you didn't think it was kind of a sport, you would be winning twelve world championships, would you? Well, the first the first <laughs> in, in like in ninety five and and like all the way to two thousand and two 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 thousand and three, I would say. Uh, you didn't need to practice a lot to win the championships. Uh, the The standards of the teams have been raised extremely much the last five years. We wouldn't stand a chance with the, the skills we had in ten years today. And and it seems like more and more, um, more and more teams from more and more countries in mainland Europe. Europe from what we read on the internet and that, but I think maybe they're viewing it as a sport. I mean, they have leagues and they rank players and rank teams and uh, do different things. I think maybe they view it as a sport in uh, Switzerland or Germany or those places. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. I I haven't thought about it that much. Mm -hmm. Um, But we don't even have a series of, the only Coupe tournament we play is the world championship and then the Swedish championship the, the week after. Mm-hmm. It, it would be funny to, to have like a league or something to play yeah. like on regular regular basis. Yeah. We, we have a question coming in from San Diego, California right now, believe it or not, Terry. And oh, yeah, sh- shoot. This is, uh, um, this is actually a question from uh, one of the team members that won the 2007, the first championship ever here in Eau Claire. Um, oh, yeah. And his question is, does he, does he, Terry, does Terry think that Kub can make it into the Olympics? How would you like to bring a gold medal home to Sveria, to Sweden, for Kub, huh? <laughs> well, I think I'll be very old when the when Kub <laughs> makes it to the, to the Olympics. See, I was thinking 2020. <laughs> 2020 Olympics. Help well, us get I'll, it there, Terry. If, if it makes it to the 2020s, I'll sure play that long. Yeah. How much longer will? Uh, how much longer do you think Team Ekeby will uh, keep playing? Well, I hope I hope Team Ekeby will be playing a long time, but I'm not sure that I'll be a part of it. And um, and I mean, we've changed team members many times and actually from the original team we have only have one guy left so I I, I hope uh, by the time when people like don't want to play anymore in team AKB I hope we can find other friends that match up uh, we have another question Yep, I, I didn't see this one. We have another question. This one's from Des Moines, Iowa. Um, and this is actually from uh, the Incastere for the team that won the U.S. championship last year, and they finished second this year. Um, yeah. His question here is, there's kind of a comment slash question, uh, what about throwing a group of Cubes in the back corner? Like maybe tossing, let's say you have seven Cubes. you have you ever thought about tossing them all kind of in a back area of the pitch? Yeah, we, we've actually been been thinking about it for a couple of years, and it, it's it's right it, it's the right way to play coup. But the thing is that we are at this point too bad at hitting hard at full length. Mm. I would say, but in an in, 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 Opt- I would think it's it's it would be optimal to to play that way to be able to place them far back, close and hitting them hard like on eight eight meters, but we're not that good yet. <laughs> <laughs> this is a sport. 
This is a sport. <laughs> you can't. You Team Activity puts out this persona, this identity that you guys play once a year. You guys get together for a barbecue the night before, and you're not. This is a sport, Terry. Come on. Sure. <laughs> I have, I have a quick question because you you'd mentioned um, that the Swedish championships were were a party and that you guys have been drinking. Um, I'm curious if uh, your team uh, consumes alcohol during the championship, and uh, if so, how much? <laughs> <laughs> during the World Championships, yeah. yep. uh, a few of us takes like one beer, and usually that's before the semifinals just to wind down a little bit. When I play with my dad, I have, he, he goes and gets a beer and I have to pour it out because <laughs> his, game, his game goes downhill. <laughs> uh, one, one beer doesn't ruin the game, I think. Okay. I'll but let no, him have no. one now because <laughs> uh, Team Eckaby told me it was okay. <laughs> but but uh, when, when the game is done, then the drinking begins. <laughs> How did you guys celebrate this year after number uh, number twelve? Well, we went into uh, to Visby and um, we we got in there quite late because it always takes a long time this championships and then you need to like go and take a shower and so I think we were we were in Visby like twelve o'clock or something and the goal is always to party up all the prize money we won. <laughs> <laughs> So it's uh, it's usually quite a a nice night. Prize money. Prize money. You weren't, money? Supposed, to, you weren't <laughs> supposed to say that, Terry. <laughs> now people are gonna but want some prize money at the U.S. You need you, you need to celebrate, don't you? How much? Uh, how much? I forgot. How much is it? How many crowns is it to uh, to win the VM? Oh, well, it's around a thousand bucks, I would say. Okay, thousand dollars. That's six thousand Swedish crowns. Okay. Okay. So it's, well, almost nine, almost nine, one nine. flight. <laughs> we need five more. Yeah. You guys need to start banking that and then then you can get a flight six flights over to America in the summer. <laughs> yeah, we could. <laughs> how how about um speaking of we were talking before about different strategies and that when when you yeah. play at the world championship and you have one uh, one baton, do you have a as an individual? Do you have a different like mindset or strategy as opposed to when you're playing in like the Swedish championship or um, Kubistan, the tournament in Stockholm, when you're throwing two or three batons? No, I don't think so. But it's it's kind of double-sided this with having just one baton uh, I mean of course it you you just have one try and if you miss it you miss it but on the other hand if you're playing bad you're not destroying as much for your team as if you had three mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm I, I like having one uh, it, it makes the, I think it makes the, the game a little bit harder as well mm -hmm. And I think it in increases the um, the feeling of team too, and there's team team strategy. Yeah, of course. Um, but on the on 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 the other hand, the the level of of the cube um, raises if you're like two people or or three people, because it's easier to find two good guys than finding six. Is your favorite six uh, six person teams though? Well, I would be crazy if I didn't say yes to that question. <laughs> You've done pretty we, well on six person teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, since we win the six person teams tournament every year. So, ha have there been any recent uh, rule changes at VM? Or do you, are there any rules that you think should change, or anything you would like to see there? Well, at this point, I, I, I'm. It, it's actually two things I think they need to change, and one thing is that if 
you throw in the, the cubes extremely close, so, so close that you can't uh, raise them without moving them, yeah. then they are considered uh, false and you need to throw them again. And, and that's just stupid, I think. If you're doing a good in, in throw, then you should be prepared for that. So that I think they need to change. And in the long run, they will also need to change the benefit of starting with the sticks in, so, in some way. Do you, do you think they should reduce the number of the people that throw first, or...? Okay. Well, I, I've thought about that a little bit, and I, I think you can do it in, in, in several ways, but one way would be, like, if both teams uh, have three batons each, and then they throw at the same time, and then the, the team that were selected to start take all but to all cubes that were knocked down like you can get three from one side and two from the other side in the first like throw short round do you follow so so each team See? would throw three batons to start the game yeah and then whoever knocked over the most cubes would start with would then get the six sticks the next turn yeah, or if you like flip a coin or something before you throw the three. I, oh, yeah. I mean, it's not very important who who goes in the second round. Another way to 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 eliminate the the um, uh, is to make another start. I mean, you could you could start with throwing just one. And then in the second round, you, th you throw two and three and four and five, and then you're in full game. Uh -huh. <clears throat> because, at, because at your level, and I don't know if any of us, oh, none of us here are at your level, so I, I should just say that, but at, at the level of the final eight, final 16 at the World Championships, I mean, if a team goes first, they want to, I mean, you need to knock over three or four, right? I mean, you're going big, and that's a huge advantage then. Yeah. Uh, it's it's almost impossible to to turn that around. If 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 you go f and take four in the first round, you're you need to be really really good to to turn that around. Yeah. What 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 was uh, that happened to to Scott here in the in the U.S. Championship? What um. Can you explain a little bit more of the other rule that you mentioned in regards to to raising the cubes at the World Championship? Yeah, they have a rule that if if they're placed so tight when you throw them in that you can't raise them without they have to move sideways. Mm -hmm. Then they then you consider the one that have to be moved as as a false, so you need to throw it again. What is that? So it, is that when they're so, on, is that when they're on the lines, or just anywhere? It, no, it, they can lay like. Uh, so you just can't put them up without moving them. I gotcha. Okay. Uh, and and I think that's crazy, and uh, I would say everyone agrees on that. Yeah. Yeah. What do you? I'm a, I'm gonna open up a can of worms right here, but. We have you on the line, so I want to I wanna hear what you have to say about this. What do you think about 45 degrees? You think that's too much? If it rotates? Yeah. Why? My, well, okay, okay I, mean, I guess. Uh, I, th I, th I think in the, in the World Championship, it's 90 degrees. And that's if or, eight, or 89 degrees. <laughs> if, in that, think, but, but on the other hand, it's, it's very hard to, to, to see when the, when the stick. The, when the baton flies in the air, I mean, how can you tell if it's 45 or 46 or 50 or 30? It's, it's hard. I think, I think you should allow a little bit of, because it, it, it's, it, it's getting too picky, I think, if you are too hard on that. What what degree would you think would be a perfect degree that you would think that it's 
it's fair for both uh, recreational fun, you know, the person that's going to go out and just just have fun and play, you know, Friday at the VM, you know, people are out there just having a good time doing whatever. But then at the same time for the elite level players, is there a degree that if, if, if we said, okay, Terry, you're going to, you're going to put down the degree that you think is perfect for the world championship. Do you have a degree that you think would be good? I have no problems with, with the 90 degree degrees rule. Uh, mostly because I, I don't think that's the best way of hitting the cubes. Mm -hmm. I think the best way is to hit them straight and and hard. Yeah. In, in that way, you have a lot more control also than when flipping them. And in my understanding of the world championship rules is that if the baton rotates, then you're allowed 45, but if it doesn't rotate, you're allowed 90. Is that right, or is it always 90? It's always 90. And wow. It side, sideways. I mean, it rotates sideways. Yeah. So you could throw it, and that, and that baton, if you're throwing it 8 meters, you can throw it, and when it hits that cube, um, it can come in uh, parallel with the ground. Yeah, more or less. Do you know what we do here? No, I, I, tell I'm me. gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you. You might. You might fall off your couch. We say ten degrees. Yeah. That's I, that's too I much. Could, you think? Too I little? could live with that. You could. But but how do, how do you how do you decide? It's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. That's the only part of the game that I mean. If a cube is up on a line. The two teams look at it and you agree on it. And if you don't agree on it, you bring over a referee and the referee says, okay, it's in or out. The, yeah. the only part of the game that makes people feel uncomfortable, I've found, is is the whole angle of the baton. And yeah. either people call it on them. Yesterday, my friend Paul and I played in Appleton and we were playing against the team in the in the final eight teams. And we were in the third third game, the third, third set. They won the first, we won the second. And they knocked over two in a row almost, and it came in sideways. And we don't allow that here. And they and they called it on themselves. And that's very rare. You don't see that much people calling it on themselves. Um, but that's like the only time when in the whole game where you feel uncomfortable or other people feel uncomfortable is when that happens. And I wish we could fix that somehow, but I don't know how you fix it. Uh, I don't know. Get get better. Get better. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm then, with then you, don't, then you don't have to worry about other players throwing them sideways. That's true too. You say, okay, it's sideways. Let me pick it up, and I'm going to knock over more of yours. Yeah. But you think you think the straight vertical is the is the most accurate? Yeah, I, yeah. I think so. But maybe if you train like spinning them. Uh, you you put, you could probably train that to perfection, and that perhaps would be better. I don't know. We we never played it that much, and never practiced it. So I I might be wrong saying that it's the best way of playing cool, but yeah, it's just the, the way we play. But if uh, if Team B gets beat by a team, and they're throwing it at forty five, you're okay with that? Well. It de it depends if they're doing it consistently. I I, I would say, well, forty five is okay right. since the since the rules say ninety. Okay. So, so it's it's not much to do. <laughs> right, right. No, it's true. And maybe here we have the mentality here that forty five is bad. You know, forty five is illegal. You know, yeah. we're gonna kick you out if you do it too much. No, I'm just kidding. We don't do that, but. So for us, 45 is like, wow, that's just, you know, like I would ne right now in my mind, I would never want to get beat by a team that throws it at 45. No. I feel like they're cheating. Well, the only way you can avoid that is getting better. I got to get better. <laughs> I got to get better. <laughs> I got to get better. And hey, I, just to all these uh, viewers out here, we got a lot of people watching right now, actually. Um, 86 now. 86. If you, cool. um, if you have any questions, uh, fire away. Terry is here. We've been on the air here for 40 minutes. 
Um, if you are watching, you probably did notice that uh, Mr. Aaron Elringer did have to leave. Um, he had brought his little kids over, and I think he was supposed to be somewhere at, at 11. So, um, But it was awesome that Aaron came, and I know he's going to be... Uh, if, if he's going out to his dad's right now, the first thing he does when he gets out there is I think he's going to start drilling at 8 meters. <laughs> I think that's the first thing, the first thing um, that he's going to do. Um, I, I have a question here, and that's, um, do, do you guys feel pressure when you're playing, and, and when do you start feeling pressure, and do you think there's more pressure on you to kind of have to kind of keep doing this run, or on the other teams that are trying to get to where you're at? Well, I, I think the, the most of the pressure is coming from ourselves, because we... We, we we really really don't want to lose any games in the world championships and since since we won 12 times and i think we have like three silver medals as well we put we put a lot of pressure on ourselves so that world championship day is it's it's a you're you're exhausted <laughs> after a full day do you can you do you see a difference in other teams though when they're when they're playing you like they do they have pressure because they're they're you're, you guys are such a you know this a, a lot of team a lot of teams give up actually even before the game starts right um, and uh, what was this saying I forgot. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, and and also if 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 we were to lose, it it always makes a, a like a, a, a news out there, and everyone knows. Um, I mean, people know before we we even know it ourselves. We lost. It it's it's a it's a big thing if we lose out there, and we I actually would try to prevent that. As much as possible. Yeah. So we, uh, yeah, we we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Sure. I think it. I, th I think it's good. So we have a, a strategy question coming from Des Moines, Iowa, um, for placement of punishment cubes. How yeah. do, how does your team determine where to put the punishment cubes? Do you go on the, ever put them on the center line, or do you go behind the king or on the baseline? Well, it, it depends on how the rest of the field looks like. If they have, like, too many short that... If, if they have, like, <clears throat> seven or eight uh, short, then I would probably put it, like, half a yard in on the other side, like, short. Because you're very probably going to move forward the next round. If they threw in those seven or eight extremely tight, I would probably put it a little bit longer, further back. Uh, if we, if it's only a few short, then I would put it maybe at seven, seven yards back or something from the from the midline. Okay, so you're you're basically looking at. And trying to determine, you know, how many batons are they going to use to clear the the rest of their group? Yeah. And if you think they're going to use all six batons to clear the group that they have, then you'll put it short. Yeah. So that you can move up. Exactly. Okay. And I think seven meters from it's a good uh, place to put it because I don't think any teams practice at seven seven meters you practice at, at four or five and eight so i think in the somewhere in the middle there some teams place them back on the on the baseline and i think that's not right because m many teams would say it's easier to hit it at, on eight meters than on like seven or seven and a half right <clears throat> do you ever um i know at the top level behind the king isn't a difficult shot anymore but do you ever place it behind the king anymore Not really. Only for fun in, in that case. You don't want to win by another team knocking over the king, right? 
If we won that way. Yeah. Do you want that? I don't remember if we won like that any time, but it, it probably happens sometime in some game during the years. I, I, I don't know. But but that's not a I mean, do you do you feel like sometimes I feel like putting it behind the king if the team knocked over the king after I put it behind the king, I would feel like maybe I didn't win. Uh, I mean, I won, but I felt like maybe I, I'm not sure if it's the cleanest win. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I know how you think, but I, I don't know. I, I don't think like that. Um, but on the other hand, we don't place it behind the king. It's, it's, been years since we did, so I, I haven't thought about it that much, yeah. actually. So, a per personal question for you, Terry. How how often do you play Coob? Well, I play a week and a half before the World Championships, and then we play. Uh, uh, we practice not that much, but let's say I practice three hours in, in all together before the the world championships and then you play like the the whole day at the world championships and then we have the swedish championships which is two days one week later yeah and after after that i'm so tired of of Coop that i don't play a single baton until a week and a half before next year's world championships okay so do you do you guys kind of use that those early matches those early games in the world championship kind of as your your warm up almost well a little bit it may be but on the other on the, on the other hand it's it's hard to play well it's first it's early in the morning and you're supposed to win those games because the the, the teams are are not that good right. and it's hard to to play your best at that that kind of game so I don't know we're just trying to to make it through the group mm -hmm. so we can more or less how uh, we got a, another question here but before we ask this question another one from the West Coast here from California um, your brother Joachim yeah Joke right nickname yeah. Joke Smeknam, yeah. Smeknam, is that nickname in Swedish? Yeah, that's yes. exactly. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> he must he must practice a little bit more. Yeah. I, I, well, he practiced a lot, maybe ten years ago, and then he's been practicing just to to keep that alive. But this year, he actually had practiced quite a lot. Um, he wanted to to take it just one step further. And, uh, and he did. He, uh, this year is he was amazing. What what um, uh, that takes me to a couple more questions. Then we'll get to the question on the West Coast. That that video that he that he put out, the yeah. sun, it was like about a week before the VM. Yeah. Was that a little strategy to scare some teams? <laughs> Do you think people get scared of that? I don't know. I'm just asking. <laughs> a little intimidation. Hey, look what I look what Team B has. Yeah, maybe it scares someone. Uh, I didn't even know he put it out. He he just told me when I got back at, to Gotland. He he went there like two weeks before me, and uh, was he was feeling quite quite good that night. So he just put up the camera and let it run. And uh, well, if it could scare someone, I'm. The first to cheer. <laughs> what what was his performance like at the um, at the VM come the uh, come the playoff round and everything? Uh, his his effort. Yeah. Well, he was kind of kind of bad, but it's it's hard to say that he, he was bad because he he was he's better than almost anyone, but not as good as we know he can be. So. But but on the other hand, that when we made it like to the quarterfinals and semifinals and the finals, he was stunning, and that's when it's the most important. So yeah, I guess I guess he he's, he was uh, all right. Why do that question there? Sure. Yeah. 
Uh, the question from San Diego, California. Do you do, do you guys practice as a team together? Or do you do? I mean, I suppose you're not always together. And then do you do you, different people on the team practice different skills and different throws? Well, not not really. We, we live and we're scattered all over Sweden. I mean, Marcus is living up in the north in a town called Umeå. And uh, my brother lives in the south near Malmo. And I'm in Stockholm. And then uh, the other guys who are still in, on Gotland, well, it's actually two, two of them only, uh, they don't practice together either. So we meet like a few times before the championships to practice. And I wouldn't say we practice different. We, I think we, 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 we all try to, to get better at all parts of the game, mm -hmm. uh, I would say. This year, you get trained a little bit throwing the stick close to the king just to, to win, the, win the batons. Okay. So you guys have been focusing on that a little bit, trying to win the first, <clears throat> first throw? Yeah. Because it's, it's, oh, it's, it's so important when you meet a good team. Yeah. When you guys uh, start a game, in your in your head, where where do you, uh, how many coups are you guys think? What's a successful first turn for Team FQB? Well, well, before we start, I would say that the the goal is always to knock knock it all down, uh, and and we actually change the the order of how we throw. Normally, I I'm, I'm the one who throws my baton first but in, in the first round when if we win the, the the batons I never start because I'm more or less worse the the worst in, in our team on hitting them on the baseline so the other guys throw there first so if they all hit then I can hit the king <laughs> yeah that's a good problem to have yeah what um, from from your experience, maybe here you know talking to your friends and your brother over and um, over by Malmo, um, what's can you compare? I okay, I guess I'll start it this way. When I went to the VM last year, I went and visited friends and family in uh, in uh, Blekinge and in uh, Smolan, and um, when I told them that I was over there to visit them and then go and play at the Coupe VM. Every one of them laughed and said they didn't believe that there was a coupe van. And no, that's, so that's that's a general opinion. Yeah. What's is you talked a little bit about coupe on Goatlan, and I would guess that most people on Goatlan know that there's a coupe world championship or play coupe. But in Stockholm, where you're at, when you tell people that you play in the coupe van or coupe in general, what's the coupe? Uh, um, kind of dynamics or atmosphere on in Stockholm compared to on on Gotland? Well since since the since the VM always is held on Gotland, everyone knows that the the championship exists. Uh, since it's such a big event also, it's like the the second biggest event in Gotland all year. Uh, but I would say most people don't play Kubing, even in Gotland, but up here on the mainland, people don't know that, that the, the, the World Championships exists. They, uh, but most, at, at the VM, and, you know, this year I think there was like 160 or 170 teams. Yeah. But it seems like that maybe like 75, 80% of the teams are from, are from the island. Yeah, yeah, that's probably right. Like, yeah, sixty or seventy percent percent. I would yeah, say. Yeah. yeah. But on the other hand, that that's quite na quite natural, because I mean, it is kind of an effort to to go there, and you need to take like a few days vacation, and it's a little bit of a travel, and so, I mean. They, they host the, the European Championships in, in Germany, and as far as I know, there's 
almost only German teams. Yeah. yeah. It's tough to get to the island, and part of it, I think, that's kind of the whole uh, uh, appeal or kind of the romantic story of the World Championship, too. It's on this remote island in the middle of the Baltic Sea that Vikings lived on. <laughs> I, you yeah. know? Yeah. I think it's pretty but, but cool. It's a nice island, though. Beautiful. It's a, it's a good island for vacations. Yeah, yeah. Next time I go, I'd like to take my whole family and vacation there for a week. That would yeah. be fun. It's beautiful. Yeah, you will love it. Yeah. They, um, how do we get, uh, you know, we don't want to come across as these Americans over here with big demands or anything like that. We don't want to do that. I hope we don't come across that way to people over there in Europe. But I can, we, Scott and I here, if, the world championships would have been live streamed. Yeah. We would have done nothing that day <laughs> and we would have watched the semifinals and final, right? Absolutely. How do, how do we get uh, the VM to maybe do a little, not saying that we do a good, we don't, we're not saying that we're know-it-alls and that we know exactly what we're doing here. We don't, we're just, we're making mistakes as we go and we're, but I know there's people all around the country here in the U.S. that would be watching the finals, and I'm sure in Germany and Switzerland and Belgium and the Netherlands. Yeah, probably. You should just. We should just keep nagging on those who arranged the, yeah. the tournament. Uh, and I think it it wouldn't be such a big big deal to to arrange. I think. I mean, you could almost do it yourself with like using BAMUSE or something. Yeah, that would be awesome, man. I, again, I don't want to come across that like we're, you know, not grateful or anything, but we would love to watch the, you know, I haven't even seen a video this year of, of at the, of at the, last year I took a little video, it, I caught your last turn, um, but then somebody videoed uh, the, the final match against um, you and um, Elephant Bice 2000, I think, last year. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. But uh, um, we uh, um, to watch that live streamed or even recorded and then watched it. Yeah, yeah. that would be I, awesome. I don't, I don't think we recorded anything this year. Oh, Gary. Actually. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is uh, we want we want the world. It's not just us two crazy guys and three originally here sitting in Eau Claire that want to watch it. I mean. We got the people. world wants to see this. Yeah. yeah I, I, I actually, I think we just forgot. It's usually my mother who, who films, and the, the question we we never even dis discuss this. We just we just forgot. Yeah, but it'd be neat to see the VM. Here's a quick little story, and just to show you how it's kind of growing here in the U.S. We uh, I was over in Appleton, the eastern part of Wisconsin. Um, uh, left on Friday and came back late last night for a tournament. And um, I called my wife yesterday morning on the way to the tournament, and she said a guy from Ohio bought a set two weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, and him and his family have fallen in love with the game. <laughs> and he said that he realized that the championship, the U.S. championships registration opens April 1st. Yeah. But he wanted to, this is what was relayed to me, he was nervous that he wasn't Gonna, that he wasn't going to get his registration in time, and he was wondering if he could like maybe get in a little bit early, or um, if it so, would so up that he day. He wanted to register right now. Yeah, these people want to register now, and this is eleven months away. Or he was scared about it. You know, he he, he wanted to make sure that he wouldn't miss out because he wants to bring two teams, and um, to Eau Claire. And I don't know what part of Ohio, but any part of Ohio has to be a twelve-hour drive. You think, Scott? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, that's it's amazing to, to think that. And uh, I mean, there's people sitting all over the states that would, and I know all over Europe that would love to watch. Um, yeah, you guys it's, play live. It's almost, it's all, it's it, it's a fun game to watch. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. How how many are you playing together in the in the U.S. Championships? Um, how many players? Players this year we had uh, this year we had two hundred and sixty two players. Oh yeah, and how many in each team? We had a minimum of three person teams. So we had oh, yeah. some uh, Scott played on a four a four person team, 
and uh, we had some six-person teams. And uh, last year we had 180 players, and that was on two-person teams, minimum. Okay. And then we increased it by 60, um, no, by 80, by 80 players this year. We we increased it by. So uh, um, next year I think we'll have to cap the tournament at uh, 96 teams. Um, so we're we'll never be the VM, but. You're not thinking about like doing a, a qualifier or something like pre-tournament to qualify for the for the big one, so you can take all that wanna wanna play. We uh um we we've, we've had people talk about or bring up the idea of having different state qualifiers or uh, regions within the U.S. You know, West Coast. You know, maybe limit the number of Wisconsin teams or Eau Claire teams and things like that, but. Um, at this time, I, I kind of like it how it's done at the World Championships. And uh, um, as long as we can keep accommodating um, this many teams and players and still put on a good, a good tournament, then, um, you know, we'll see. Maybe it yeah. keeps growing like it does in, uh, on the island. I don't know. It's going to keep growing. It's going to keep it's growing. Gonna, it's yeah. 90, 96 teams is... We're gonna we're gonna smash that out of the water one of these years. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, uh, I'm glad to hear. We we have it now in um, some of the schools. You know, Eau Claire is not a big town. You know, it's um, about sixty five thousand people. But we now have Coob uh, in a in about half of the uh, half of the elementary schools. They have yeah, Coob in their uh, PE in their uh, PE classes or gym classes. Oh, that's so, great. Um, we're getting more and more kids playing, so um, that's uh, um, that's the future right there. I think to keep it going. So yeah, it's a good game because everyone can play. I mean, you don't even have to be fit. <laughs> no, and that's the great thing. And and uh, boys and girls can compete at the same level. Um, yeah. People that run marathons can compete at the same level as people that can't or, or you know or are not in shape um so uh yeah that's great maybe we should recruit a few girls to team make a beer that would be awesome that would be great that'd be great for the game yeah. that that was one thing that i really liked about and i'm not sure the team from basel this year who if they brought the same players or not but when we played last year we made it i played on the immigrants and we played uh, against them in the round of 16 um, we had two, um, yeah, we had two, two females on our team and the team from Basel had three, I think. And, uh, yeah, uh, three, three or four. Okay. And, uh, we were the only two teams that had females, I think in the final 16 and, and I have two little girls and I thought that was kind of cool to see, um, uh, to see that in that level and then to see them go far and girls yeah. can see that and they can say, Hey, we can play this game too. Yeah, Marcus and, and Tobias has um, have a younger sister who is really really good. She could easily play with us, as I would say. Yeah, careful. They might wanna, you know, you might have to go to a seven person team, or they might be, uh, you know. Yeah, but, uh, we have we have a few retired guys who also could could be like we could we could probably go there with. 10 people and just try to play those who are the best at the moment. Yep. And uh, Gregor, he's the only one that's won all of them. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He, he has a, he has a very unique throw that I saw. He, he stands there and he, and he looks at it for a while, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, he, he doesn't throw that hard. So he's, he's, he is most often play, like, Hitting if if there's a single one left somewhere, and yeah. It, it just snipes it. Yeah. What uh um, how many people do you think were watching the final this year at the World Championships? Well, I think it was like, like yes, like like yes, last year. How many could, could it have been? Like a couple of hundred. Three, four hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because some so, people go home after yeah, they're, they're done. Yeah. 
Yeah. It, it, it was more people watching our last game in the group. Okay. Because everybody is still there. Yeah, we were we were surrounded by a crowd. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good. That would be awesome. I, you know, when we played um, in the final sixteen, you probably don't remember it, but um, the immigrants we played right next to you guys, and um, we had a few people watching our match, maybe thirty or forty. We had some supporters there for the immigrants, and uh, we were playing against a team from Basel, and they had uh, some supporters too. Um, yeah, but you're. Your field had quite a few people around it, and, and I could actually yeah. feel I had never been in that arena before. You know, i lucky to have 10 people watching me. My kids and wife don't even watch me watch me play. So I, it, was, uh, it was quite an experience to see that many people watching and just playing it right next against you guys, and that environment and intensity at that match um, was fun. Yeah, we usually have quite a, quite a crowd watching us, but... Because I think if if you're if you're there just to watch Kub, and you you can choose between watching like the the twelve times champions or any other team, I mean, a lot of people go and, and watch our games, and I, I think that's a good thing because we we get the practice in front of a uh, crowd all the time. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we benefit from that. Yeah, 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 for sure. Absolutely. Um, well, hey, I think that wraps it up. Is you, you got another one? One more? Or? No, I was just, I was just gonna say, like, dude, when you, you know, when you were playing in the group, how? I mean, yeah, people want to people want to watch you guys play, but when you get into an intense match like that, I mean, there's got to be part of it that's like, oh, we want to, we want to see Team Eckerby lose. Yeah. Just. <laughs> Just because you, I mean, you always win, but you know, that would be like, that would be more shocking for people. And then for the big crowd that comes to see, to see you guys lose, you know, especially if you're in, in a real intense match with it, or it looks well, it, 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 it depends, uh, this, this specific game, it was like, it was against a foreign team. And I think even though most people would want to see, see us lose, I think they still would want a Swedish team to win against a foreign team. Sure. But but in like Sweden, uh, us playing a Swedish team, they almost always cheer for the for the opponents. Okay. Do you, now nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Do you, Do you think? And then and then we'll wrap it up here, Terry, because I know you, you we've been on the thing here for over an hour, and uh, uh, thank you so much. Do you Do you think? Uh, Team Ekebi or any players from Team Ekebi will ever uh, take a little trip to uh, to Germany or Belgium or Switzerland or anything and do a little tournament down there? Well, we, we, we've been talking about it back and forth, but we never really got serious about it. And I don't know. We would probably feel like we have to win every game that we go to and that's no. I don't think it's so fun to go and and have that feeling. Mm -hmm. So I would I would rather go with someone outside of Team Ekebi. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then just think of it more as a vacation and uh, just go have fun and meet new people from a different country. Yeah, and, and that's actually the 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 reason why Yuki and I didn't play together at the at the Swedish Championships. Because if, if we would, everyone would expect us to win every game. And, and that, I mean, then you have another two days with pressure and we just go, and go there to have fun. And so, so we split up and play the one team each. So, so come, I mean, at the World Championships, you guys, you guys are mentally, physically, everything. You guys are into it. You guys are drained the next day, right? I mean, you give everything you have at that tournament, though, right? Well, it's it's mentally exhausting to play yeah. the, the the championship. I think uh, not physically uh, so much. If it's not been a, a really hot day, because it, it drains you physically to be like be in the sun for fourteen hours or mm -hmm. whatever it takes. 
but sure you get exhausted yeah mm-hmm. that's that's the tough thing i was talking to my playing partner paul yesterday and i and i told him i said you know i would love to go to one of these tournaments and uh just go with the mentality that i'm going to go and just have fun other than try to do as well as i can do yeah and part of it is if i maybe you know it's it depends on who maybe you play with or if you can just go to a tournament and say we're just going to go have fun and whatever happens happens um but sometimes yeah. that's difficult yeah, of course still you 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 will of course try to win every game but you you wouldn't i wouldn't feel the pressure as i would feel if i played with with yuki or marcus or some some guy in, mm-hmm. in, in my team but still of course i will try to win every game mm-hmm. one you, yeah go ahead w- wouldn't you yeah no yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. i uh that's one thing that I that I kind of struggle with with that, um, because I want to think of it as is a fun thing. I don't want to think of Kuba as something that's stressful. No, exactly. I want to think of Kuba as something that adds something to my life and that doesn't cause me, if I finish second, that I'm disappointed, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, want to, I want to be silver medal syndrome. Yeah, the silver medal <laughs> syndrome. One. Well, well, I, I can tell you that. We're not too happy with our three silvers either. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> That's good to know. And maybe, maybe we all can learn something from that. In that, you know, for those of us that have, um, and I'm just speaking for Scott and myself. For those of us that, you know, maybe have families and this and that. You know, maybe we, maybe we circle one tournament a year on our calendar and say that's our big one, or two yeah. tournaments, or three. No, I'm just kidding. Two, <laughs> two, right? or, or all of them. Or all of them. And we say these are the tournaments that we're going to really focus and, and we want to do as well as we can. But the other ones, we're going to go and we're just going to have fun. Maybe we split up our teams. Maybe we see if um, our, our wives want to play with us. That, that, you know, I've played with my wife once and that really loosened me up. Um, and think, okay, these other ones... Kube is going to be something that's not stressful in my life. It's going to be. It's going to be. Uh, I mean, I have fun when I play, and I'm and I'm serious. Yeah. But it's also a little stressful. Well, it, it, that works for us. I, I think it's a good good strategy. I like that a lot. Yuki you, you actually <laughs> threw away one silver medal, so his one short. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't happy with it. No, he was furious. But you also got to consider, though. Would you rather? I mean, would you rather lose in the quarterfinals and not get to play all the way through, all the way through to the final? I would rather keep winning and play, and then get to play in the final, even if I lose, and get that silver medal, rather than getting knocked out, you know, way before in the tournament. I don't know. We we've been knocked out in the in the group play two times, and I would say those those years don't wasn't that bad as the silvers i guess it, it's uh, it's hard to to almost almost make it and then lose Coob's a sport yeah. <laughs> Coob's a sport terry Coob's a sport <laughs> you can't <laughs> wow this is awesome man i i could talk to you all day i am is the the minute that i figure out another way to get to the world championships i am going to it's going to be like a, a rotating clock on my wall, the hours and seconds that I get back over there. It's the most amazing thing to see everything going on over there. And Yeah, and, 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 and if you stay a week, we can play the, the Swedish championships together, you and I. <laughs> oh, that's, that's what we're talking about, new snuck RV. That's what I, we're talking about. That's, uh, wow, how do I turn that down? Exactly. Yeah, and, and it's in Nibiru, and... Uh, that's really yeah, close. It's, it's, yeah, it's in Smallland. Yeah, and that's right close to where my uh, family lives. Some of my family. So, wow. So it's, it's perfect. I'm writing that down, Terry. Yeah. <laughs> you have a, st- a standing in- invitation. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much. That is that is amazing. Wow. Oh, okay. And, and <laughs> if you if you bring a few teammates, I could probably f- get a f- few more of the guys in team making me to play with you. 
You know, that that actually makes me think of something, Terry, and I'm and I'm and I'm serious when I say this is that when people talk to me about playing in the world championships, I tell them that just to get over there and play and do it for us, just as quick as you can do it is like six days because you have to fly over there and that's not even like sightseeing Stockholm or taking anything into in, in sightseeing in Gotland. Maybe the best way to do it is to say, okay, you know what? We're going to be over there for two weeks. Just It's once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and play in the world championships, do a little sightseeing, stay on Goatland, check it out, see the sights, and then go over to Smolan, take the ferry, and, and yeah, play in yeah, the... Or, or, or I think you can can uh, find the time to, to go spend a few days in Stockholm and then, like go down it's it's only uh, like four hour drive from stockholm to to nibro yeah and you guys actually have trains too right yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was, a, yeah, that was an inside joke to us wisconsin people here we uh we were gonna get trains but we don't have trains now so um <laughs> yeah so that would be that's the way to do it seriously yeah 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 mm -hmm. wow that would be funny. yeah that would be that would be awesome they would be okay. Two quick more questions on my end, and then I promise we'll let you go if Scott doesn't have any more. But I, I can't guarantee you. Sure, go ahead. For, for the Swedish championships, they they paint the lines on there for the for the pitches. Do you like that yeah. or not? Yeah, I think that's fucking brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Because then you don't you don't need the, those referees laying and like thinking for ten minutes if it's in or out. Yeah. I mean. If the cube is on the line, it's out. Is that is that how it's done? If it's touching the paint, it's out. Yeah. Do you know how they paint the lines on there? Do they have a big form, wooden form that they paint around it, or? I don't know, but I, th it, I think it's it's the same color as you as you paint, paint like a, a football field or a soccer. Yeah. Soccer field. Yeah. Yeah, that looks like it's a lot of fun at the at the Swedish Championship. What um, last year in the in the magazine we interviewed uh, the different uh, incasteres in in around the world and we interviewed Marcus and he said yeah. that he um, he was designated the incastere for Team B last year at at the barbecue the night yeah. before. Did you guys do that again this year? Well, this year a lo a lot of people or guys in the team did have didn't practice a lot and. Gregor, he, he is eliminated. He is not even in that competition. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he's not bad, but he's not nearly in, in, in the level that I would say Tobias and Juke and Marcus and Stefan as well. Those four are, are the good guys. And I mean, Gregor and I just aren't good enough. And this year, no one was actually quite good at it so we just thought that we'd go with Marcus again he yeah. did well last year yeah but I, I would say the the throw-ins is a, that's our weak spot we're, we're not as good as we should be at the at the throw-ins and that and that was what uh, Marcus and uh, Yoke both said to me when I um, talked to him a couple times by email or that is that you know, I asked them for their opinion on stuff, and I think they both said, uh, here's what I think, but, uh, you know, I, I'm not even close to being the best. So <laughs> talk to other no. people, and you guys still win. That's amazing. Yeah, you have to compensate with by f hitting them better. <laughs> yeah. And, and doing it the right way, like, like we talked about before, throwing the right number short and... And like having the feel on what what can can my team perform right now? I mean, if 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 we feel that if we are all six are throwing really really bad, I would say we wouldn't we wouldn't even throw seven short or maybe five or six. Uh, uh, but if we're on a roll and everyone is doing well, we we could probably go for eight or nine or ten. Uh, so you you gotta have a feeling for what we are performing right now. What do, you, what do you think sets you guys apart? Because hearing you say that about throwing the cubes in, it seems like here in the U.S. that's what 
separates the top teams is they'll they'll have a really good coob tosser. Yeah. And that's that's what separates the kind of the 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 good teams from like maybe the elite level teams and to hear you say that that's your weakest that's the weakest part of your team like what is it be you know that makes you guys so good if you're not good at consistency okay i mean when we play at our worst we are quite good actually uh we we almost never play really really bad so when i say we play bad it's it's not that bad but most teams are quite inconsistent. They can play brilliant in five or ten minutes, and then they make one round that is just like misses five out of six. And if you do that against us, then the game is out over. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you can never ever make such a round because then you lose. And um, we try to to be. As as consistent as as possible, cool. and just wait and just wait for the opponents to make a mistake. Mm-hmm. How man? I let's have you eaten dinner yet, Terry? No, we're gonna we're gonna we need to. That 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 takes me to a one other question. <clears throat> for most of your games, do you do you yeah. feel like you win the game, or do you, or does our team lose the game? I, I would say. Almost always, the other t- team loses the game uh, by letting us move forward or or something like that. Actually, actually, the final this year we won because I, I don't think any of the teams moved forward at mm-hmm. any time. At any time, and then it, it becomes just like who who hits the baseline best. Yeah, and. Uh, and we started with the sticks, so we had a big advance there. So I would say if, if they had won the sticks, they w- we would probably lose. Do you think um, – this is, I'm just going to ask this because I live on this side of the Atlantic Ocean. Do you, do you think some of these highly competitive teams in, uh, in uh, I guess, mainland Europe, I guess you could say it, do – do you think when they hear that you that you play about a week a year before the tournament, and that um, it's kind of more of a um, that there's not as much training and, and, and those types of things going on? Do you think these high elite teams? Do you think that just that just bugs them that that they've been training and working so hard and they've never gotten that gold? And then do you think? Do you think one of these teams from mainland Europe? I mean, someday they're going to win the world championship, right? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, of course, uh, they probably will. But on the other hand, we, we've been playing this for—I mean, I've been playing it for 17 years, and like 10, 10 15 years ago, I, I did practice too quite a lot. Uh, and I mean, nowadays it's just to try to maintain that skills from from one year to the next and and also when we when we practice we don't we don't play matches against each other we, we're playing like this year i've been throwing it i don't know if you've seen the clip on youtube on it's called the cube simulator you showed me that can you yeah can you describe is, is it okay if you tell everybody what that is well it's, it's pra- practically a board with a with a hole that is like just a little bit wider than a stick and i mean what could it be 10 inches high maybe seven inches high and then you throw on you stand on on, on different uh, different lengths like you start at three meters four meters six meters eight meters 10 meters and 12 meters and then we then you should try to get the baton through the hole in the board Wow. Uh, and and to do that you you need to have like no side rotation and exactly the, the right rotation so you like spin it half around <laughs> uh, it's disgustingly hard <laughs> scott's gonna go home and make one right now <laughs> yeah you, you could you could check on on youtube it's i, I think it's called cube simulator okay was that your invention 
Yeah, we made, we actually built it like I don't know if it was last year or the year before that. Uh, and it, it's it's good practice. It's hard as hell. So that's what I mean. When you practice for a week or two before, you're Terry Eklof. You you're not practicing your drill. You're not. You're just you're just fine tuning your sword to get ready for the VM, right? What did you say? You're just you, you're just sharpening your sword for the battle. You're you're just focusing on a specific your throw and that's how you train you're not practicing uh throwing the coobs you're not practicing that type of the game you're just focusing on that how you throw your baton yeah uh, exactly and and there's another reason why we don't like play coob to practice because it takes a long a lot of time to just like putting all the the coobs up every time you you hit them down so if you have like something that like this coop simulator it, it it i mean it never you, you don't have to raise anything you just have a lot of sticks and throw and throw and throw and throw we should have done this it's it's, it's we, much more effective training we should have kept this for when we weren't recording <laughs> we should have uh we should have do you, now it's now it's going to be out there for do, do you ever, okay, and then I promise we're going to let you go. This is the longest interview I think we've done, and I apologize. Do you, do you ever, like when you get together with your brother or family or other people from Team Activity when they get together, do you guys ever just go in the backyard and play Coob for the fun of it? Uh, if it's off, uh, off VM season. time? Yeah, yeah. No, never. Do you, okay, here's a question. Do you enjoy Kube? Is it fun? Well, it's 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 fun to win, um, and I could I, I, I can enjoy a game if I'm playing with someone equal as equal good as I am. And so, saying that, I'm also saying I'm I exactly. For example, I'm I'm never playing Yuki. I've I've played against him in like seven, six or seven years, I think. Because his, I, I can't win against him, so I just get get pissed off. He <laughs> playing against. He wins in like two turns, right? Yeah, he's just he he's just too good. I can't win even if I start with the batons. When you when you and now I'm going in depth. I'm not letting you off the the interview here. When when you when you first, <laughs> I'm going uncharted territory here. When you first learned the game. When you were throwing yeah. it with like pieces off a ladder, I think, or something, you were saying, did, yeah. you, did you enjoy the game then? Was it fun then? Yeah. Uh, well, the, I, I can I can see the 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 fun of the game if if you go down a little bit and and like if you mix up the teams a little bit with a, with a few players that are not that good. I think I I just think today. The good teams are, are too good for the game. You need to to make the games harder, I think, to to make it a really enjoyable game uh, these days. Is that maybe like a nine meter field? Is it just one throw of the coob? Things like that? Yeah. Well, I haven't thought that much about what needs to be done, but I, I would say it's it needs to be harder. Smaller coops, maybe I don't know. Yeah. Do do the other players on Team Ekkabi that that you know of, and I mean you don't have to speak for them, but do they um, play in the off season for fun with uh, with family members or friends in a neighborhood or? Uh, I don't know. I know for sure that that Yuki, my little brother, uh, doesn't. Uh, I, I would guess Marcus is doing it because he's, he's moved to a new town and people there probably don't know his as good as he is, so he probably is showing off up there. And that's up in Umeo, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. How about how about the other top teams from Goatland? Um, do you think they play during the summer months too or no or is it just uh it's vm time and you do it and then when it's not vm time you're 
you're uh, out in your boats on Goatland or in Visby having fun or what? Um... I don't know, actually. I mean, back in, like, like I said, like 10, 15 years ago, we played a lot of cub and we played it with, with family members in the backyards and the parties and, and all of that. But, I mean, we played it for so long and so much. So we, I get kind of fed up with it that like the intense couple weeks right wow but but you still kind of enjoy a little bit the week before the vm and training and getting ready and hanging out with the teammates and that yeah uh, it's it's a really funny week because that's the only only time we we meet all like like all six of us yeah Here's, here, I have a question. Uh, we probably got to get going, huh, Scott? I have a quick question for Scott. How often, yeah. do, Scott, how often do you think about Coob? <laughs> think about it? <laughs> Pretty much every day. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that, but, but that's, that's the way if you want to be the best. So, But maybe what happens is after you play it for a long time and if one gets to a certain level, you know, it's um, like you said, if you've mastered it, you're at that level where how can it be fun? In, in it's it's not the thing that we master it, but I mean we've come to that level that if if you want to be better than we are, then you need to put a lot of exercise into it. And I don't think any of us would, likes would like to do that. Yeah, I, I would say we we are more or less as good as you can be as as playing as without practicing too much but if anyone would like really deter be determined to to practice coup a lot then we would we would uh, we would lose against them I'm, I'm pretty sure about that yeah yeah wow thank you man Incredible. you just you've blown me away like five times today this is awesome <laughs> this is great huh scott yeah. yeah and i know you should have seen scott and aaron's faces when they uh walked in my house here uh getting ready for this interview man we were all excited huh you bet it was like it was like christmas for us man this is <laughs> awesome so uh um I'm gonna let you go, Terry. Or I'm, actually, I'm gonna stop this conversation on the on the computer. But I'm gonna keep you on Skype. Is that okay? I just want to say thanks to you and everything off the record, off the, so people don't sure. have to see all that stuff. But I'm just gonna stop this right now, and um, we are yeah. going to. Uh, um, I just want to say thanks to uh, Terry Ekloff. He's living in Stockholm, Sweden, right now, and he's uh, a member of the 12-time uh, world champion uh, Team Ekkeby. And uh, thank you so much. And um, thanks for Scott and Aaron that joined me as well. And uh, for any information about the U.S. National Coob Championship, please go to usacoob.org. And uh, again, thank you so much for joining us today. This was just, this was amazing. Was this not amazing, Scott? Amazing. This was just mind blowing. I gotta, well, actually, I'm gonna stop this and then I'm gonna watch it again cool. right now. So, all right, guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.